Fantastic stuff. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much. I really appreciate being here and having this opportunity to be able to have to have a chat with you. So my name is James. I am the product manager for MYB Advanced, which essentially means that I need to that I work with partners, I work with clients, I work with um, support, development, everyone like that to try and help deliver MYB Advanced to you with the features and functionality that will help support your business and help you to grow. That's really what our key objective is. All right, so today what I'd like to do is take you through very briefly two topics, okay? Touch on very quickly what has been happening inside MYOB over the last 18 to 24 months, as well as then focus on what, where we're going with the product at the same time, where we're going with MYOB Advanced. So let's start, and I'll just, I won't be long, I won't take too much time, just to discuss a few things that have been happening inside MYOB, because over the last 18 months, there has been quite a bit of stuff that's been happening internally, which some of which you may have seen coming through on the news. So I just wanted to clarify and just discuss some of those elements. So it all started back in about August, October, sort of a time, 2018, where investment uh, venture capital company KKR started making inquiries and put a proposal to our board um, to, uh, to buy um, MYOB. So previously, we were a publicly listed company on the ASX, they came forward um, looking to put through, put through a, an acquisition and purchase MYOB, all the shares inside MYOB. Now that obviously takes a bit of time to work through, so that all happened and ultimately in about May last year, the deal actually, um, deal actually got carried out. So we moved off the, from being a publicly listed company, we're now privately owned by KKR and straight away, as with all venture capital companies, they, they go into a review of strategy to start going through and understanding what we're doing, what we're focusing on, how we can, um, how we do things, and more importantly, how we can do things better to be able to support our clients, grow the company, and build, build value associated to that. So they en engaged with Bain to come in and do all the report, do all the analysis, and Bain got to the point where they were about to present all their findings when we had a change at the same time in our CEO. So we had a CEO, Tim Reed, who had been involved with the company for the past 13 years. Um, he decided it was his time to move on based on the fact that really, if he was going to stay on, then the venture capital company is going to want him to stay for another five years. At that point in time, there would probably be some sort of um, exit event from the, from the venture capital company. We might list again, et cetera, and he'd probably then be required to commit even further. So um, he decided that after 13 years, his time was done. And so we've brought in a new CEO who's got, like all CEOs, they have very different ideas. They have a different um, this way that they want to approach things. And so we went through a bit of an organizational restructuring, et cetera. So as anyone that's been involved in that knows that um, restructures are never fun, but ultimately it is putting us in a much better position to really be able to grow and build the company going forward to benefit our clients. I guess one of the key things that came out of the whole thing was, as I said, Bain did a complete review of our strategy and have completely endorsed the strategy that we, have, that we were going down the path of. So we presented to them exactly what our, op what our focus was and they absolutely endorsed that and actually looked to see how we can accelerate that strategy because it ultimately will deliver what we need um, to benefit the company, to benefit our clients, to benefit our, um, the product overall. So ultimately it's all very good news, it really is. Um, and now, as I say, let me take you into a couple of those, those details around what our strategy is for the product going forward. So, oh, wrong way, let me go this way. So let me go through that path with, of the product. So when we talk about our strategy, there, there are four elements or four components to our strategy. There's discussions around and focus on our platform, which is really the underlying elements associated to being able to deliver advance to you. Then there's the functionality within the product. And we wanna ensure that the functionality that we provide is there to help you to grow, help your business through all its different phases of growth and really be able to provide you strength and best in class functionality. We're then looking very specifically at how we can start taking the product and building out industry solutions. 
So when we talk about industry solutions, we're talking about how do we shape the product to really fit and address a, a specific solution such as construction, distribution, et cetera, and really provide deep functionality inside those areas to be able to support our clients and help our clients really become as efficient as possible in the way they operate through the use of our software. Then the other aspect of our strategy is also around migration. We want to be able to provide people easy ways to be able to get onto our so get onto our product. So we're looking at a number of different ways to ease the transition process onto onto advanced. So let me let me drill into some of those areas a little bit more. And we'll start off with the platform. So with the platform, as I say, we are talking about being able to deliver a platform to enable you to grow as well as provide you that the, the, the security and the reliability of performance with your product. And there are a number of different pillars around this. So again, we're looking at functionality within the actual platform. So how can we provide you with tools to be able to manage your environment, manage your site with, if you need to, to be able to really be beneficial? Now there we're working with a variety of different partnerships to really help provide that value, such as working very closely with AWS, which is where all of your all of the sites are hosted, to ensure that we are providing or and structuring the environment in the most effective way to be able to provide you with a good, stable, reliable platform to work on. The upgrades of the product are also absolutely key. I'll go through very shortly on, how, on the functionality and the features that we are looking to bring to the product, but we wanna be able to make sure that with those features, we can deliver them to your site, to your system without too much disruption. And so that is something that we are constantly focusing on, constantly working through to see how we can enhance the way we do upgrades, the way we deliver that value to you to make sure that you can benefit from the value without any issues at the same time. Performance is also an, an absolutely key feature of the solution. Um, we put it down there as the number one customer feature is the performance of the system. If the system doesn't perform, no matter what functionality you have inside the product, it, it's just going to be frustrating. So we're doing a lot of work on performance. Um, we're putting in a lot of proactive management around the performance. So as soon as we start seeing things, we can start reacting to them before they become an impact to, to clients. Um, and I know that this is something that it's not, we certainly haven't reached an end point. It is something that we are constantly going to be working on and constantly going to be focusing on how we can enhance this and deliver better, more, fit, more benefit to our clients in that area. And then security. Security is something that underpins everything that we do. Um, we hear so many stories about people facing challenges of using the internet, et cetera. So we want to make sure that we provide a environment and a solution where our clients don't need to worry about security. We've got them covered, we've got your backs, we've taken control and taken care of the systems. We have regular penetration tests, we have regular audits around this to make sure that what we are doing and how we are doing it um, complies with, secure, with, uh, with all the security governance around um, so that you can rest assured that the system is there and the system is, is secure. So from a platform perspective, that's where we're looking to be able to really build out and continue to focus and deliver over the next few years. But at the same time, it's the functionality that you use on a day-to-day -day basis that really drives this product, okay? You want the product to be able to do the work that you need to do in a fast, efficient manner and be able to cover off all your different needs without having to jump into different, too many different areas. So before we get, so there are a couple of things that we want to go through that I'm going to go through. Um, I first of all want to touch on Jams Manufacturing. I'm not sure how many people here are using our manufacture or using the manufacturing module. So I just want to quickly touch on a couple of aspects there. I will talk about advanced people, our payroll solution, what's been happening with advanced people. And then I'll get into the core product advanced business, um, where we're going with the product and some of the features around that. So to begin with, just quickly touching on manufacturing, the manufacturing module. Now, as I mentioned, I'm not sure how many people here use the manufacturing module, 
but the module, the manufacturing solution has always been provided by a third party um, company that has provided, that has created this customization or this additional ISV solution to be able to support manufacturing. Now, it was announced in late January that Acumatica, Acumatica who is the, essentially builds the, the underlying product that MYB Advance is based on, Acumatica has purchased the JAMS manufacturing solution and will be incorporating that in as a core part of the, of the product. So if you are using the JAMS manufacturing product, um, it's going to now, what it really means is that it's now gonna become part and parcel of the core product. So you won't be needing to deal with any other third parties. MYOB in the process of upskilling to support, the, to support our partners in the same way as we support our partners with all other aspects of the product. Um, and ultimately what Acumatica is gonna be doing is gonna be, taking, is going to be taking the code and bringing it in as core, as, as part of the product. So what that means is that there will no longer be a separate customization. There will no longer be separate upgrades required for the manufacturing. It'll all be happen as part, as part of the core product, which I think ultimately will deliver a very good value and a very good solution to our clients that use the manufacturing functionality. So as of this point in time, um, all work that is being done with um, with the manufacturing solution will now start becoming coming through MYOB. So if you do run the product, you'll start seeing that we will be um, taking over the billing of it. We'll be taking over the support of it. Um, we'll be looking at the different pricing options. And then ultimately, as I said, the code will be incorporated into the product as part and parcel of the solution. So you can absolutely rest assured if you're using the manufacturing solution, it is a very strong part of our go forward with this product. All right, so then let's look at advanced people. So advanced people, as I mentioned, is our payroll solution. And there's a lot of work that is going on inside the advanced people product. So to begin with, we have, we are in the process at the moment of deploying our 2020.1 release. Some sites have been upgraded. A lot of sites still need to be upgraded, but there's been a lot of new features and functionality that has come through in the 2020.1 release, such as the employee self-service, self the ability to take timesheets and push timesheets through into payroll and a lot of additional functionality. And that continues throughout the course of this year. So during the course of this year, we are focusing on four main upgrades or four main releases, um, one in February, one in May. So you can see at the same time, some of the items that are planned for the, for the May release, um, redundancies, et cetera. And as we go forward, and move into our August and November releases, a lot of focus now gets put on the New Zealand aspect because at the moment our payroll solution is not, um, is not suitable for New Zealand. So we will absolutely be looking to bring in New Zealand payroll by the end of this year. So I know, we, I know I'm talking to people across in Australia, but if you do have companies or, um, or, uh, other, or other systems across in New Zealand, we will be having a New Zealand payroll solution that will be compliant um, by in market by the end of this year. So that's something that is a real key differentiator and a real key focus for us to be able to provide that really strong integrated payroll solution that then ties in with all of our other business processes. If we move on then and start looking at the advanced business solution, and I first of all want to stop and just take a little bit of a look back at the last two years of releases and just highlight that there has been a lot of features and functionality that has been delivered over the last two years. So if we go all the way back to 2018.1, so in 2018.1, we delivered the new, from a usability perspective, we started coming through with the new UI and the new UI has the opportunity to really allow you to change the way you work and really enhance the solution to be able to provide you with workspaces completely tailored to your particular needs and your particular business flows. And I really encourage you to take that up and, and adjust the workspaces to really suit your particular needs and requirements. So that's something that's coming through. We did a lot of work inside dashboards. We started introducing this functionality called business process monitoring. And that's possibly not something that too many of the cloud, too many of you have started working with yet. 
but we've enhanced this more and made it more available inside the 2020.1 release that's coming out, which really allows you to be able to build the rules into your system to alert you when things are happening or to carry out an action when something happens. So for example, when a quote comes close to its due date, send out an email to the client or to the prospect um, just to remind them about that. So you can start automating all of these things and have the system do the work for you. From a financial perspective, we started splitting up how the companies are structured inside Advanced. So bring, bringing in a complete um, tenant, multi-company, multi-branch structure, which allows us, and as we continue to develop, allows us to be able to grow the solution into a number of different places. We did a lot more with the distribution, quick order processing, um, a lot of direct invoicing, the device hub to try and speed up the whole processing element, doing your printing, et cetera. Project accounting is something that constantly takes a lot of focus. So where we have brought through pro formers, we've done a lot of work on the budgeting, cost codes, change orders, all those sorts of areas to be able to support bigger businesses and bigger, more complex project, project accounting structures. And then CRM is always something that is, is, is there that gets a lot of focus. So Salesforce integration, a number of different areas. So that was a lot of features that came through inside the 2018.1 release. We then have been deploying our 2019 release. And again, we've got a lot of features that came through in 2019. Um, the side panels for generic inquiry. So you don't have to be drilling into things all the time. You can see things on the side, of, on the side panel. Um, enhancements to generic inquiries for highlighting and totaling, um, project accounting, multi-currency, um, default project tasks, et cetera. Financi in the financial side of things, we've got all of the, um, the changes to the company calendars that came through. We brought in bank feeds. So again, there's been a lot of focus on bringing through fun features and functionality to really help you and really start building your businesses that you can support. And with the, with the licensing structure that we have, all of this becomes available to you as part of the upgrade. So that's taking a look back as to what has happened. What is, let's take a look forward as to what is coming, coming at the moment. So this is just talking at the moment about a couple of key themes within the product. It's not specific to a particular release, but more a case of where are we going with the product overall. So I spoke a little bit about finance where we started in 2018, where we started changing the structure of companies, branches, et cetera. And as I mentioned, that is really the starting point for us to be able to do a lot more. So some of the key things that we're gonna be focusing on inside the finance area is to be able to bring in multi-base currency within a tenant. So the whole objective here is that you can have one tenant with a company for New Zealand, a company for Australia, all within that one tenant, obviously your New Zealand com company is based on the New Zealand dollar with its, own, um, with its own calendar. Likewise, you've got the Australian company based on Australian dollars with its own financial calendar. You can then start sharing customers between these. And so it really starts building out a, a module that really allows us to be able to cater to to larger, more complex companies and allows you to be able to start sharing your information between, um, between the different entities within your group. So that is something that we're gonna to continue to focus on and continue to build. The user interface is also a key area that we're gonna be focusing on. I said earlier on inside the presentation that performance is probably the number one feature within any solution. Um, the user interface is probably the number two feature because no matter what functionality we put into the product, if it is challenging or difficult to use, people just don't use it. So we are constantly getting feedback on the user interface on how we can improve it. And it is an area that is being focused on at the moment. So where we're going with this is to really, and it's requiring us to do quite a lot of under the hood work to try and be able to build out the core that we need. But what we are doing is, building it out in such a way that it gives you a lot of flexibility within the solution. So down the line, what we wanna be able to provide you with is the ability without the need of coding or without the need of consulting, et cetera, to be able to do this, you should be able to tailor your own screens, hide fields that you don't need, hide tabs that you don't necessarily require, 
alter what's on the screen so that you can really tail the, tailor the system to your particular needs and requirements. Now, as I say, this is a, going to be an ongoing process. It's going to take us a while to get this completed. But really, the focus is we're going to start bringing some of these changes out fairly soon. But it's going to carry out for a while. Um, but as again, as I say, it's really there to be able to make the whole experience very personal to the way your business uses the software. All right, reporting. Now, I could probably ask a couple of questions around the group and around reporting and reporting requirements. And I think reporting would become a source of challenge for everyone. It's one of those things that unfortunately, no matter how much we do, reporting is a challenge because everyone wants reporting done in different ways. They're looking for the information in a different way, in a slightly different format, with different parameters. And realistically, one of the key priorities for any solution such as advanced is we put a lot of information into the product. If we can't get that information out in a way that we want to or a way that you want to be able to use it, it really becomes frustrating. So we are constantly looking at ways that we can make reporting a lot easier. Now, one of the key areas that we do use for reporting is the generic inquiry because the generic inquiry gives us that ability for anyone, clients included, to be able to manipulate the view or the access to the information to be able to get the information out in any way, shape or form. Admittedly, at this point in time, GIs are probably not the easiest for clients to use. And so that's where we'll be doing a lot of focus over the next two years to really improve it so that it's easier for you to be able to build out your own queries so the system can recommend how to join things together, how to report on things, what tables you need, all those sorts of things. And you can really use that to be able to provide a strong um, reporting tool and a reporting option. And then the projects module continues to be a really strong area within the product. So one of the things that I'll be talking about a little bit later on is, as I mentioned, we are focusing on certain verticals. And one of the verticals or industry solutions that we are focusing on is the construction side of things. And really as the construction aspect carries on and builds out, so the whole project accounting module really gets developed further and further and helps us to be able to really manage some very strong, very complex, very lengthy jobs or projects that a company may have on the go. And that's something that we, can, we do want to continue to build out. We really want the projects module to be able to support companies with bigger projects. However, at the same time, we are also very aware that there's, a, that there's a strong need for certain companies who just do quick turnover projects, um, quick jobs that they need to be able to record time materials, expenses, build a customer, et cetera. And recently we have released our field service module within, the, within advanced. And the field service module is one that will really be able to cater for those quick turnaround jobs. So we certainly see that the solution is growing out and extending to the point where we can now cover off and support quite a wide range of projects through from, the, from a quick turnaround job all the way up to a multi, potentially a multi-year project that has to be carried out. All right, so let's now drill into the next major release. So our next major release being the 2020.2, once again, there's a lot, of inf lot of features and functionality coming through inside there. We're gonna continue to focus, as I mentioned, on usability, bringing through some enhancements to you to user-defined fields, the side panels, dashboards, a whole, lot of, um, a whole lot of new features and functionality. One of the things I do wanna highlight to the existing users of Advanced is that very bottom one under usability, deprecation of the classic UI. So I spoke about in 2018.1, how we released the new user interface within the product. Unfortunately, the old user interface has to also see its day. So with the release of the 2020.2, we will be deprecating the old classic UI and um, everyone will need to be using the new UI going forward. From a distribution perspective, in the 2019 release, we introduced the, um, the 
warehouse management solution, being able to do your scanner-based picking and packing, we're gonna to continue to enhance that and build out more features around that. At the same time, bringing in a standard functionality matrix inventory. So where you have different dimensions associated to your inventory, um, making it easier to work with those different dimensions. Such a thing as color, size, style, et cetera, as part of, core part of, of, the, of, the, of the product. Financials, we continue to continue to grow out on that one, restricting control of your, restricting use of control accounts to prevent imbalances, corporate credit cards, those sorts of things. And we'll also be looking to enhance um, the bank feed solution to be able to support corporate credit card processing into your expenses. Project accounting, again, continues to get some more features and continues to be built out, predominantly in alignment with the, um, with the construction edition requirements. But that's not all. We continue to build out all different parts of the solution. So we'll be looking to bring out the field in the field service. There's new features and functionality coming through inside there regarding travel time, travel breaks, a number of different areas there. In CRM, the ability to be able to control and customize your, um, your workflows so that you can start defining how the, how, the, how the workflow should happen within your system as opposed to having it predefined for you. For those of you who use the manufacturing solution, data collection of, from the manufacturing via scanning on the shop floor so you can get a lot more feedback as to exactly what's happening. From a technology perspective, linking into text messaging alerts so that you'll be able to send out text messages based on appointments, based on changes to, to different things. Again, when quotes become due, you can text off when, we're, um, when a shipment is carried out or is processed, you can send out a text message to your customer automatically. All of those sorts of things we're wanting to start bringing into the product so that you can start really benefiting from, those, from that automation. So just so that you're all aware and across it, um, we're gonna start, I'm just gonna bring all of these through, bring all of this up. So we're gonna start the deployments of the 2020.2. It is a major release. So we're gonna make it available in, in May. We're going to do a deployment process through June, July, and August. Your partners will be across um, how, when your site is gonna be upgraded so that you'll have a lot of clarity, you'll have the ability to be able to test it out and try it out and see how it benefits your particular business. All right, and then I just wanna to touch briefly on industry solutions. So as I mentioned, industry solutions, we are looking to be able to build out the product into specific vertical industries and really introduce deep functionality for each of those industries to be able to support our clients inside those industries. So, and this is not something that, that goes beyond just product. It is gonna be talking to all different aspects of how we go to business, go to, go to market. It's product, it is, um, it is our approach to sales, it is our approach to marketing, it is, it is the user training. And that's one of the key areas that we need to really focus on is, is to improve the user training to be able to guide users through the system specific to the requirements of that particular industry. We also wanna make sure that with any industry solution that we build out, that we tailor the, to the terminology specifically to that industry. Now, I can also understand at this point in time, as being that you may be existing clients to advanced, you might be asking how this is gonna benefit you. And I guess the benefits that will come through from your side is that as we go into these industry solutions, we'll be really analyzing deeply the key requirements or potentially the key integrations that are required for that particular industry solution. So it might be integrations into freightage, it might be integrations into payment solutions, all those sorts of things. And we will be looking to really build those integrations and make sure that any of our existing clients inside those industries can leverage those particular, um, those particular pieces of functionality. So as we go inside, as we go into these industries, so you will benefit through the new things that we bring into the product. And that really covers off what I wanted to go through. Uh, next up, we have uh, Stephen Friend is just going to run us run through some uh, through some customer success stories. 